So part of the thing that we have to understand is we've got the tools to get us there now, and that's important. The next bias that I have is one of the things that drives me nuts, and this is something, and again, when I think in the room, it's really just God. Um, how many people heard or faith or somebody, anybody say the job of schools is to create, to, is to make sure that America has the workforce it needs or something to that effect? I hate that. <laughs> and to me, that sells our kids short. The job of schools, our job is not to create a workforce, our job is to co create with our kids. A citizenry. And I got into a huge argument with Ken Kay, who's the, the founder of the Partnership for 21st Century Skills. He claimed that I was just talking semantics. It was the same thing. And nothing could be further from the truth. When we ask for, when we shoot for citizenry, we will get the workers we need, and I believe that. But we won't get the leaders we need if we don't shoot for citizenry. And, I, when, we, and when we shoot for citizenry, I want workers. I mean, I want leaders. I want scholars, I want parents, I want husbands and wives, I want neighbors. Only citizenry gets you there. Workforce gets you workers. Workforce gets you people who are good at following directions. And again, interestingly, independent schools have always known that. You guys train leaders. And you guys have known that for 200 years now. But it's important to remember it too. And the last bias, and this I'm gonna cop to, and again, it's a little weird for me to be in a room full of independent school teachers and say this, but, to me, public education is the whole ballgame. Without public education, there is no American democratic experience. It is the great equalizer. It is the thing that allows kids from North Philly to um, have, the, have the ability to make their ideas known as powerfully as kids who sit in schools like this. So to me, the American democratic experiment is about public education. And so that idea is incredibly passionate to me. Now that being said, I think that there's incredible rich possibilities for partnerships between public and private schools and public and independent schools. I think that we have to look for the places of synergy and I think on some level you guys have an added, added responsibility because you guys can lead in ways that many, many public schools cannot right now. So what they're saying about us, and this is beginning to creep even into the language that I've seen you know, about all schools, is they're saying schools are broken and obsolete, they don't matter anymore. Um, you know, even uh, Bill Gates is now saying, you know, all we need are a bunch of computers and, you know, computers and we're good to go. And the problem is, if we don't change, we're going to be broken. And let me talk to this, I love schools. I, you know, I was that kid in, in, in high school who, you know, stayed after, who was close to the professors, teachers, and da 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 da. I love school. I think that schools are incredible places. But I'm deeply worried about where we're going. So I think days like this are important. I think days like this are allow, allow us to stop. They allow us to reflect. They allow us to question. They allow us to move forward. And I think that's really, really important. So here's the question that I have. And literally, this question really does keep me up at night. I don't know how, I mean, you know, I, I, like I said, I've, been, I've met thousands upon thousands of teachers, and I've yet to meet that person who spends their, you know, in our schools are good, kind, caring people who want what's best for the kids in our charge. And yet, all over this country, schools are not getting it done to the degree that they should. And the problem is, if you put good people into a broken system, the system wins way too often. And so we've got to look at, systemically, how we set up our schools. To me, that idea of, I am the pioneering teacher, in my school, against all odds, succeeding for kids, is a path to martyrdom and burnout. There are over 4 million teachers in America. I think it's about 4 million martyrs this year. We either find a way to do this better for all of us, or we're in a lot of trouble. So the interesting thing is, is that I, we live in some crazy, wonderful, weird time, right? And that is, I call it the Maddening Paradox of Education 2010. This is Sam. Um, Sam is not, of course he's dripping, but Sam is working. Um, Sam is doing a dissection, I believe it was a grasshopper dissection. I love to walk around, so I just took this with my iPhone. Um, and you can see he's got it hooked up to the document camera, he's got it pulled into his laptop, 
He's going to take that. He's going to capture those images. He's going to make those images part of the lab report that he, that he turns in. Now, I hated biology in high school. Funny, I run a science high school, but I hated biology. And the reason was, I'm a horrendous artist. I mean, like, stick figure quality. And so, no matter what I did, I was king of the C plus lab report. <laughs> because every drawing I did looked like an amoeba. I think when we did the amoeba, I might have gotten an A. I don't know. But you know, otherwise, it, I just was, I was done. Now, my best friend who I sat next to is an artist. He actually is um, the executive director of the Allen's Lane Art Center, Craig Stover, if you know him. Um, really awesome artist, picturemaker.com. Um, so rare that I'm in my hometown. Craig was an incredible artist. Now, of course, my teacher didn't like group work because I was better at the bio than he was, and so he got his B pluses because he might not have understood anything, but his art was always gorgeous. And I got, you know, and, and so it was crazy. What we should have done is collaborated, and we would have put together a really awesome lab report, but we didn't. And so now Sam can do this. He has incredible power at his disposal to do really wonderful things. And the funny thing is, no one will care that he can do all of this stuff. And no one will care that he can publish a lab report that is worthy of anything that Pearson might turn out. Unless he gets the question right on the PSSAs. Unless he nails the, the one or two questions that might be about whatever you know, concepts in biology this is. So it's crazy. Our kids can do more, create more, publish more, understand more than ever before. And they are being measured in the most reductive way they've ever been measured, which is nuts. And how many people, I'm just curious, especially in this audience, has this phrase crept into the independent school world yet? OK, clearly yes, judging by the snickers I hear. Right? Data-driven decision making. In the public school world, this is every principal's meeting I go to, is where's your data? What's your data? How's your data? Who's your data? The problem is, if you use bad data to make decisions, you will make bad decisions. Data-driven decision-making assumes that you use really high-quality data. Now, the funny thing is we have amazing data on kids. It's the work they do in their classes every day. And yet, we trust all the other stuff more than we trust their own work. Now, part of that's on us. We have to do a better job as a community of learners to create systems of inter-rater reliability. We've got to do a better job to make sure that an A in Mr. Smith's class is an A in Ms. Jones' class is an A in whoever's class. I ran out of silly names. We also have to understand that there is a huge difference between education and training. I think standardized tests oftentimes do a really good job of measuring how well you've trained a kid. But I don't think they measure how well they're educated. And what I would say to all the corporations out there who say, you know, we need schools to do a better job of training, you know, the workers because they don't have the skills they need, my answer to them is do it yourself. My job isn't to get them ready for you. My job is to get them ready for the world. And if there's a specialized set of skills that a kid might need to do a certain job, good. Make sure they get them. I'm going to make sure that they can think. Beyond that, you know, hey, you can handle the rest of it. I'll give you an example. How many math teachers do we have in the room? Raise your hand if you're a math teacher. Oh, you guys are really walking out of the room. How many people know what NCTM recommends for math sequence? That what the highest, the pinnacle of, of the high school education should be in mathematics? Subject? Yeah, what subject? Calculus. That is incorrect. Statistics. Statistics. Right? To the rest of the room, math teachers are not allowed to answer this question. When, how many of you have used, have done a derivative in the last year? <laughs> Sorry, math teachers. But now I'm going to give it back to you. How many of you have needed to make sure you understood a statistic, a statistic in the last year? How many of you have watched a political ad in the last month? <laughs> every hand should have gone there. Calculus is a specialized skill, and it's a good skill, and it teaches you habits of mind that are powerful and amazing and important. But what we usually do in most schools is we take kids and we push them towards calculus, and then, well, if you're not very good at math, well, then you can take statistics. What? 
The difference between citizenship-driven education and, and worker-based education can be defined in that moment. If we believe in citizenship, we'll teach every kid statistics. Because if you can't read, pick up the New York Times, read, the, you know, read all the stuff about politics and know who's lying and who's not, then we've done you a disservice. But the 10% of the kids who might need calculus when they graduate can pick it up in other places. And I know the math teachers are now checked out. They will be paying no attention for the rest of this day. But that is the difference, I think, to me. I think there's another thing, which is, and again, you hear a lot that we live in the era of accountability in, high, in schools today. And we did this to ourselves. Accountability is fundamentally an external metric. I hold you accountable. And what I believe is that no one can hold us more accountable than we hold ourselves responsible for the kids in our charge. Responsibility is an internal metric. And every time a teacher, and we've all done it, have thrown up our hands and said, it's not my fault they didn't get it, I did all I could, we whittled away at our own responsibility and allowed someone else to hold us accountable. So I think we've got to retake some language. I also think there's a big problem, which is that we have a lack of vision in education today. I stole this picture off a of, picture off a of Flickr. I looked recently; she changed the uh, the teacher changed the uh, the caption. But when I first grabbed it, it, the caption was something along those like, "Look at my beautiful new classroom." Well, the legs of the desks are blue. That's something you don't see every day. But short of that, this picture could have happened at any time. And the reason, on some level, one of the reasons that desks in rows and textbooks on the desk have survived as long as they have, is almost no one's ever gotten in trouble for it. No head of school, no principal, no director ever walked by, or not no, some I guess, ever walked by a classroom and saw the kids quietly reading at their, you know, in their desks at, in the rows and went, there's something wrong here. <laughs> Gotta change that. Most of us, and I say us meaning principals, heads of schools, administrators, do too, put really good value on the quiet classroom. Phew, thank God, no one's going to complain about that. I got enough to do. <laughs> but that leads to a lack of vision. Because we are unwilling to question the things that just kind of have worked forever. Another big problem is there's a huge lack of humility in education today. Most of that is not on the part of teachers. Most teachers are pretty humble. Now again, there's some that, I'm wonderful, it's not my fault the kids failed them every last thing I gave them. Um, and there are those folks. I'm talking about at the national level. I'm talking about at the policy level. Every time, and again, I'll pick, them on, pick on them because it's easy. Every time Bill Gates, or Arnie Duncan, or anybody else <coughs> stands up and says, we know everything we need to know about education. We just have to do it. I think, can you please tell me? Because I don't. Our first year graduation rate at SLA was 94.1%. I'm incredibly proud of that. That 5.9% are eight kids. I know all their names. I failed them. Couldn't get them. I know we tried. I know we tried everything we thought to think to do. Eight kids didn't make it. Keeps me up at 